we're all nerds here, come on. So we all have to like study. Studying is my life, okay? You could tell, like, look, I'm literally wearing science full merch. Okay, I should stop flexing my science full merch. Honestly, I really took off my jacket just to show off my science full merch, but now I had to show off my scrawny arms. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. But going back to studying, unfortunately, if you study the wrong way, it can get quite inefficient. Bro, okay, okay, no, 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 I, 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 I totally, totally was studying. Wait, what, what, what are you talking about? I totally wasn't watching PewDiePie or anything. See, look, look how efficiently I was studying. Come on. Bro, I was gonna do a musical video, but then the grader decided to troll me, so... We're talking about studying. Don't worry, studying is actually fun. It's gonna be great. Hello, everybody, I'm Karar, and today we're gonna be talking about studying efficiently. But first off, let's first talk about the Olympiads, because you guys just wanted me to do a quick real quick reaction. So let's go through it. First off, FMA A. I think that the cutoff's gonna be relatively high, like 17, 18, maybe even 19, honestly. Like, personally, I think that I would got like an 18 or 19, but like, a lot of the questions were super conceptual. Like, I don't even know. The thing is like, it was really easy to make silly mistakes on that test. I don't know whether I'm allowed to give examples yet, but like, you know what I'm talking about, right? All the silly conceptual things, and then you come out of the test, and then your friend's like, Oh, but did you consider that? Well, no, I didn't, so now I get like a 0 out of 25. Epic. So, I feel, unfortunately, I feel like the cutoff's gonna be high, but unfortunately at the same time, there's so many ways to silly, so it's gonna like really destroy a bunch of random people. I'm sorry. It's unfortunate. But FMB, I think, was a lot better, because that was like a lot more math-oriented, it was a lot more complex physics, so I think that is going to have a lot higher cutoff, I mean lower cutoff, <laughs> no, 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 if it's harder, it's lower, okay, I swear, it'll, it'll probably be like 15 or 16, maybe 17, but like somewhere around there, I, I think I did a lot better on the B, even though the A was a lot easier, so it should be good. Unfortunately for you AMC 10 takers, I did not take the AMC 10, and I feel like if I took the, it as a mock, that first off wouldn't be very helpful for me, and second off, like, some of the problem between AMC 12 and AMC 10 are shared, so I feel like that would not be a super good, like, measure of how well I would do on the actual thing. But from what I heard, I feel like this, this year's AMC 10 was, like, comparable to last year's, so maybe around the same cutoff would be expected, maybe even a little higher, I don't know. For AMC 12, however, I think it was way harder than last year. Like, on practice tests, my lowest was, like, 115. Like, I consistently got above that. But then, when I went there, I got, like, 102 and 105. So, I don't know. Maybe I just trolled, which which I agree, I did troll. I spent, like, 100 hours on this one problem just because I read it wrong. And then I ended up not even getting it after I read it properly. <sighs> and then another one I just read incorrectly and wasn't able to solve it at all. So, that was unfortunate. But anyway, I feel like the cutoff is going to be around 90. Like, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower, but like, around 90 sounds good. Okay, enough talking about Olympians are over. Why are we keep talking about this? Come on, let's take a break, broski, and talk about studying. Because the perfect time to talk about studying is after all the things you got to study for are over. Alright, so I already made a productivity tips video. So I'm going to try to steer away from that kind of thing and like, how to get yourself to do stuff and more focus on what stuff to do when you're studying. So, like, here's a, a couple, like, quick-fire tips. So the first one is just chill out a little bit before you start studying. Like, set aside 30 minutes of just chill time. Just chill the heck out. Watch PewDiePie, I don't even know. And then once you finish that chill time that you allotted for yourself, then go into the studying focused without any other distractions and just set a set, set time for yourself and do it. Like for example, say I'm going to play like 30 minutes of video games, then I'm going to spend the next two hours just studying on this single subject for the single test, and I'm not going to get distracted by anything. The reason why you're relaxing beforehand helps is because that means during your studying you're not like, bruh, I've been working the whole day, can I just stop now? Because then you've already relaxed a little bit, you feel a lot better, and now you're ready to study. I think it just helps me a lot, personally. Another one is just work with friends because like, not only do they ask good questions, but also you might have some questions that you want to ask them. And honestly, just studying with friends encourages you to study because honestly, I am I just don't like studying by myself. It's really boring. Can't focus. No like zero chance I'm going to focus. But when I'm with my friends like in class, they they actually do so much work and then I'm like, "Oh, I should probably do work too." So then I start studying. It's pretty epic. 
shh, I, I totally don't cave into peer pressure or anything. I am a very independent man. Like, another thing that might work out well is, like, turn your phone on silent, but, like, that, that's just a cliche thing. Like, everybody says that, but, I mean, no one actually does it. Come on, who, who turns off their phone during studying? Like, what? Another good studying tip is to run my videos on the background, okay? Just have your headphones on, just listening to my soothing voice, and you're guaranteed to study way better, okay? Guaranteed. Another general studying tip, like, figure out what kind of studying works for you. Like, some people like drawing diagrams. I personally hate taking notes, hate doing anything, like, handwritten. So, like, I personally don't do that kind of stuff, but figure out what kind of thing works for you. Like, for me, the thing that helps things stick in the head the most for me is, like, actually doing the derivations of certain laws so that, like, during the test, I don't have to, like, memorize the law word for word. I could just derive it during the test. But I don't know. There's a lot of ways to do this. Just figure out what works for you. But that's all the quick fire ones. Let's get into the more in-depth stuff. Okay, so first off, the first thing you gotta know when it comes to studying is that the two types of studying, right? There's long term and short term. So long term is basically all your Olympiads, all your ACTs, SATs, standardized tests, all the things that happen like once a year. Now the reason why this is like a lot different from short term things, which are like school tests and stuff, is that you have a lot of time to study stuff, but there's also a lot of material to cover. So just cramming like a day before the test, unfortunately, it doesn't work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to break it to you guys who's all crammed for AMC. I don't know how you guys do it, but unfortunately, it doesn't work. So basically, the first step for doing long-term studying is obviously like building up your knowledge base, right? Like, you first have to have background knowledge before you actually take the test. So for Olympiads, for example, for me, when I was getting into math, right, this is like sixth grade and stuff, I didn't take any practice tests. I literally... Didn't even take the AMC 10 that year, even though I was allowed to take it. Just because the main thing you want to do is you want to first have, like, a background. There's no reason just, like, jumping into the problem solving if you don't have, like, the fundamentals down, right? So the way you build up those fundamentals for math in particular is maybe taking AOPS classes or reading AOPS books and just doing problems in those books because those introduce new concepts to you. Like, just doing practice tests and finding the concepts that you miss is not a really good way because that's just picking and choosing random things that were asked in the past. But like, in the future, they might ask about different concepts. So like, it's always better just to get all the concepts you can down before you actually jump into the practice test. Because then you're just picking and choosing, and then like, you're very narrow, and you have a lot less breadth than someone who's done all the whole AOP textbook. Nonsense. For ACT and SAT, like those kind of things, it's more of an IQ test, like if I'm going to be completely honest with you, because a lot of the stuff that you apply has to come from all of your previous school years. So... It's basically impossible to study, like, the concepts for ACT and SAT because, like, those should have been covered in school, but, like, you could still, I guess, like, get a grammar textbook or something, but, yeah, those, you don't really have to build up a knowledge base. Alright, once you have the knowledge, okay, once you have so much knowledge that it's not even funny, like, when your brain is, like, exploding, then you're ready to take one practice test, okay, you're not allowed to take multiple, just one. Exactly one. That's right. How many? That's right. One. Now the reason why you only take one practice test is because practice tests are not easy to come by, okay? So unless you're getting 100% on the practice test, there's still some more studying that needs to be done, and there's no reason why you should use more practice tests. So what you should do with this single practice test, this epic single practice test that you're doing, is you should take it, see what you missed, and then work on those specific concepts throughout the rest of the year, right? So for example, when I was studying for AMCs, like in ninth grade, what I did is I took a practice test, right? And I basically like missed a ton of counting problems for no reason at all. So what I did is I took the intermediate counting book and I just went through the whole thing cover to cover and did all the challenge problems and all that good stuff. And basically that like, now, now like counting is one of my favorite subjects and like I'm actually decent at it. And then, at some point, you're going to be so epic at everything that has to do with this test that you're studying for in the long term that you could get like 100%. Then, you should start grinding all the tests. Like, you should just keep doing practice tests after practice tests after practice tests. Because you need to practice your timing. You need to make sure that you don't, like, waste time during the test to do stuff. So, at this stage of studying, just keep doing practice tests to make sure that you have your time management and everything down. Okay, but now the time that you've all been waiting for, like, who cares about Olympiads? Olympiads are irrelevant compared to school, okay? You need to keep those A pluses, you need to be a true agent, and make sure that not a single one drops to a B, okay? But anyways, now we're talking about short-term studying, which is basically your school tests and quizzes and that kind of stuff, where you have a little bit of material that's very specific, like you have the entire list of what's covered on the test, 
and you need to study it the day before. Or maybe the week before if you're a cool kid, but like, if you're me, then it's the day before. Okay? So, of course, most of the time you're going to be on a time crunch because you procrastinated and you didn't pay attention and you didn't know what you were doing and you didn't want to study beforehand. In that case, you got to review the harder material first. So, ideally, you would have been doing the homework and you would know what's hard. But if you didn't do the homework, then you had to figure out what's hard before you start studying. So the best way to do that is usually like in textbooks, they have that review section, right? Like that one section that has problems from all the sections of that chapter. Basically what I do is I go to the review section, just do the review section, and then see which problems were hard for me or like which ones I missed. And then I basically go back to those sections in the chapter and review that. However, if you actually have time on your hands, if you have like two days before the test, then you should review the harder material last, okay? Now that seems counterintuitive. Why would I want to review the harder material last? I need some more time to study the harder material. Well, if you have like a decent amount of time, right? You should have time to study everything. So, the first thing you should do is you should build your confidence on the stuff you already know. Then, when you go into the harder stuff, you're not like panicked. You're not like, bro, I'm going to fail this test. Because you feel a lot more comfortable about the stuff that you already knew and that you weren't planning on studying. If you study the hard stuff first, then you're going to like finish studying the hard stuff. And you're just going to only study the hard stuff. And then, when you go into the test, you're like, bruh, what happens if I mess up one of the easy things that I thought I was comfortable with, but now I don't think I'm actually comfortable with? That's why you just want to make sure to build up your confidence by studying the easier stuff, just making sure you're comfortable with it. And once you've assured yourself that you're good and you're chilling, then you move on to the harder stuff and then you study the heck out of that. Now there's a lot of ways to review, like most people just read the notes and I honestly think that that's like the worst way to do it because reading the notes not only is it just going to go through one year, or no, it's going to go through your eyes and out the year, so something like that, I don't know how it works. But if you actually do problems, you have to apply the concepts and then that's going to let you memorize it way easier. So honestly, it's better to do problems in my opinion. But there's like a lot of ways to study, right? Read notes, do problems from the book, find problems online. You could also do derivations, like I said, and then also you could compile all the types of problems that might show up on the test and then just make sure that you know how to solve each type of problem, like, theoretically. You don't need to necessarily plug in numbers, but you should know the pro. Alrighty, that's all I got for studying. Hope this was helpful. Let me know if it was. Thank you guys for all the support. You guys have been watching my videos. Thank you guys so much. If you guys need some more videos, if you need more tips, just let me know. I read all the comments. I read all the Discord. So just let me know. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.